Hasta la vista, baby. That game won! Damn, man! That was just non-stop! They, they never let up. It was just intensity the whole way through. Man, I, I think... Ah, I'm glad he played some Rage, because I, I needed a little shot in the arm to get ready for game two. We got a best of five ahead of us here, COH Fight fans. Are you guys ready for game two? Hollow at us in the chest. Oh! Razor, are you ready? Oh, yeah, I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm feeling sorry for the Frenchmen that live in Samoa. I hope that uh, their lovely town doesn't get quite as destroyed this game. Well, we got a, we got a we got a solution for that. We got Sexy Plexi here. She just comes in with the, you know the broom and a little little outfit, a little maid outfit, black and white with some thigh highs, and just start you know to pump stilettos and just sweeps it all up. And look at that! Five minutes later, it's all back, spick and span, fresh, good as new. So after following very much that whole game, I am going to be following the Americans for a little change of pace, and we're going to do this thing again. Let's just count it in. Here we go, fight fans. I'm paused at five. We're going to unpause in five, four, three, two, one. Unpause. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And the hits keep coming. Seb informs us that Semwa is not a town. It's the name of a river. Interesting to know. We need to tour Normandy and visit these places, of course. Some of the COH maps are based on actual locations. Some are completely uh, invented. Well, let's see how this game goes, because the champion's taken a hell of a lot of knocks in that game. And uh, I don't think he's used to being in this position. You know, he usually wins game one, but then he might give a few games away. I mean, he's had his back against it before. He's He's been in the elimination game a bunch of times, you know. I think Ma'alum had him in the season finale of season two, had him 2-0 uh, to zero or 2-1, to one, and Siberian came back and won the series. So, you know, he might have lost game one, but do not count this champion out. He's doing a 4ES Rax build here. And I see a funny little uh, swimming car coming out of the Vermont Bay. Yeah, we've got the Schwimmbargen first, which I th think is going to be good against the late racks with the sort of four engineer late racks, because that can shove them around and do quite a lot of damage. And they're pretty short range to do any damage, so I think they're going to struggle with dealing with this. It, but it depends how much impact it's going to have. Um, if it runs into the rifles early on, I don't know if it will be that helpful. Well, he knew he'd find these engineers here, and he's trying to push them off. They're trying to raise the last little bits of that flag. He must be spam capping shift cap flag, shift cap flag, shift cap flag. And DevM's clicking, clicking, clicking all over the place, pushing them off. And it looks like DevM is going to win this little skirmish. That flag is not going to see the top of the pole. Engineers yeah, are like, all right, then, uh... we're just going to fight you. Look at these engineers are doing tons of damage to the swim wagon. I'm kind of impressed. Yeah. If you get up in their face and fight them, they will cause a lot of damage to you. The Schwimm was MG not next, able to so, do any uh, real damage or kill a guy or anything, and it's limping away. It's got a flat tire and a, cr a crooked axle. It's like, where are my pyos at? I need some ripped. 
MG second unit as well, which is immediately spotted by Siberian, so he knows where that MG is set up and DevM's going to have to move it, otherwise he's going to get immediately flanked. He really needs the bike-MG combination. Capping with an MG, interesting. Okay, the, the swim brought its friends, and it's a, it's like a grudge match down in the south now. It's, it's personal. Oh, the swim's gone away. The pile, oh, what? And now we got a jeep. We're going to see some jeep on swim action in game two of Semwa. I don't... I, the enemy is seizing our territory. We have seen jeeps before, but uh, f previously we saw them built first. We saw them a lot in the, um, in the WMD finals. And so now here we have some Jeep versus Swim action. The Jeep's got some nice cover there. He's got a quick damaged engine. There's a stroke of luck. But will he be able to get the kill? Yeah, we saw the rifles squad forced off in the middle as well. And once again, uh, DevM capping with an MG. He's capping that center VP there. I'm just fascinated by this Swim-Jeep battle. You don't often see openings like this. Some success for the Swim. He did kill one of those rascally engineers which he hates so much but the jeep comes in from the rear he's going to try to deliver some damage wow that, that the swim can pivot quite nicely uh oh one pio dead other pio still repairing yeah. jeep at 50 percent this is quite an interesting fight as well because you get the um it's quite an intense for coh and quite intense micro of trying to target the engineers or pioneers when they're repairing and then oh! you switch off from repairing so you don't take as much damage the Schwim gets the last laugh and is able to kill those horrible Brooklyn engineers that did so much damage to them when he was pushing them around on the south ammo. He manages to annihilate the squad on retreat. A very good kill by DevM. He's got to be happy about that little first skirmish. Hopefully it's foreshadowing for the war for him. He's going to put some mines down there on that, um, on that bridge with his remaining living pioneer. And meanwhile, we just kind of have a standoff in the center where both uh, teams, factions, armies, are not really willing to start trading blows quite yet. Yeah, we do and we don't, though, because the fuel is actually going to be capped here, I think, by Siberian. And the only thing coming out from Devem is a sniper, um, which it'll force them off but it won't necessarily be able to recap it that quickly. So I think he's going to be down on fuel early on in the game, which is never something you want to happen on Simois. The loud crack of the sniper's rifle echoes through Simois as he, as he takes out two of those engineers. They are able to raise that plus 10 fuel and retreat. Um, Siberian's also moving into the center, but that swim is still there, and we still... <laughs> it's, it's swim versus jeep round two! He's unlucky getting the engineers suppressed there. I think they're going to have to retreat really fast. This time there's a whole bunch of other guys just like getting in the way. The, 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 the jeep was like, I'll meet you at 3 o'clock by the center VP. Schwim was like, let's do this. And then like the Schwim brought like all his friends. And the jeep was like, yo, I thought you and I were going to fight man to man. And Schwim's like, eh, 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 eh. losing territory. Sniper So again we've got the away. early sniper. Yeah, the early sniper from Vermex again, but there is a jeep already out on the field, so he needs to be quite careful to have that supported and not lose it early on. Okay, here we go, 3 o'clock schoolyard fight, round 3, jeep versus swim. They need names, Razor. Name, name your swim, I'll name my jeep. My jeep is named George the Jeep, in honor of you. What is your swim name? Uh, Stefan. Stefan the Schwimmwagen. Stefan, a very nice German name, especially if you say it with the S C H, the Stefan, that German S. Now look, he's doing spins. He did a little dance for us there. We called out his name, and he did a little spin. Look, he's he's so cute. He's doing a dance for us. Lots of micro happening here. Here comes George. George. George and Stefan are gonna go for round four. Stefan brought his friends again. He plays dirty, don't he? Uh, it looks like the Jeeps brought quite a few friends as well. In fact, some of them are flanking this MG. This could be really bad if these flamers get in behind the sniper and MG. How come they're not hopping in that house? Wouldn't that be great for them to hop in there? 
Oh, they just retreat. Uh, I think there's just the one door and there's one fire as well, blocking it. No no rear entrance on that house? You gotta walk all the way in and go, no, go in the front? No, it's just the front entrance. Right next to all the baddies? Oh, man. Alright. Here comes the Faust. Oh, no, George, you're gonna buy it! Wait, wait, wait. Oh! Ah, George! You're surviving! Save the Jeep! Hey! Save oh. George! Oh, he's alive! Save Ferris! Oh! Here comes Stefan! He's gonna finish you off, George! He's gonna finish you off! Look at him! He's got bloodlust! Here he comes! He's chasing you! But George, you're fast! And you're on red cover! And you're gonna get out of there! Oh my god, my neighbors are pissed, man! They're like stomping on my floor! <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Take it for me for a second! Oh my god! My neighbors are like pounding on my ceiling, man! We're in the rest of the game. We've got a tier 2 up from the Vermax, and it looks like we're beginning the grand sp uh, we've got a half track coming as well. It's very useful to have an early half track, but uh, it's going to run into the US M8, which has just popped out and gone back in and popped out again. Uh, it's looking quite good for the Vermite, I'd say. Other than the fuel losing the fuel early on, it's looking pretty solid for him. He's got sniper out. As long as he keeps that defended, that'll keep doing manpower damage. He's got reason to be good map control for a Vermite at this stage of the game. Hasn't lost any significant units. See the Srimvargen harassing the engineers again down at the bottom. Five kills on the Srimvargen now, and the Jeep only has two. So I would say that Stefan is definitely in the lead at the moment. But George is alive, and that's uh, that's something. He 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 was seeing that white light, you know. It's like I see white light. It's calling. To, they want me to come and climb the stairs, and then he was ripped back into reality. No, sorry. You will live. Yeah, I think we're going to see something from Devon we've seen quite a bit from players, which I really like seeing, which is where you keep the half-track near, near the sniper. So if the sniper gets rushed, you just jump him in the half-track and drive away. Oh no, he retreats because he sees the Jeep and the M8 coming. I love how the Jeep is kind of leading the way for the M8, so if there, if there were any mines, it would just be the, the Jeep that would get it. And uh, he's, he's sort of scouting forward for the M8. Really great, great micro to see here. Really nice tactics. That's the Jeep's real duty, you know. He's recon, and he is doing his job. Ten minutes into the game. Quick time sync. I'm at 10, 25, 26, 27. The pack is out, and uh, that, and that M8 has great game sense, and he does not uh, want to get up in there. He does not want to go mess with that pack. Yeah, there, a lot of mines going could down have got a hit off there, the pack. But he shot the ground again, exactly the same as the last game. So it's quite irritating when you have a cloaked unit that uh, decides to shoot the ground with its opening surprise shot. Yeah. We're approaching that part of the middle game where uh, these pro players build up wonderful armies of combined arms. And this is where COH just gets fantastic. They gotta, they gotta micro all of their armies in formation support the, the various units. This is where the game gets really beautiful. But this M8 is just teeing off. The pack is totally out of position and this M8 is having a field day in the center. Does lose those flamers though as they explode in a ball in position of now. fury glory by the tree. Those rifles sometimes have real foul mouths. Here we see some shreked up grenadiers. They're going to see what they can do about that M8. Where's George? How's George do? George and M8, high five. M8 needs a name. His name is going to be Dave. George and Dave, high five. Getting a little bit surreal here. Uh, we've got... So I'd say the Vermite's still looking really strong. Um, he's got the pack out now. It's going to stop the M8 from rampaging around the map. He's got the half-track sniper, decent infantry force to hold off any infantry pushes from the U.S. And uh, we've also oh. escalated to tier 3. Oh. Stefan and George, round 5, you know. And look at how Stefan, like, he's like, I'm not going to go over that mine, you go over that mine. Stefan and Dave, whoever, uh, uh, George, sorry, whoever dies first is going to lose. You know that, between the swim magnet and the Jeep. The, the first super light vehicle that is lost... I'd be surprised if this room dies will first. Well, then, you know, DevM is going to have a 2-0 lead out of Simwa. That's, that's Ami's prediction.
Alright, let's see how that works. Oh, we've got tier 3 going up now. So, we've got tier 2, tier 3, slightly different order but similar principle um, as last game. I'll be interested to see whether yep. DevM decides to go for early Nebels Ooh, or Ghost for Pumas, considering he's already got the half track. Off map shoot kills the MG on the first shell. And Dave has taken tons of damage there. Dave is down with a damaged engine. Sniper still going to work. Wow, that off map has just spread all over the place. Oh, oh. he's decrewed the pack. That's not good. These Volks are going to get right back on it, though. And this M8, if these Vol if these gets a shoot, oh, it was kind of a misfire. The shell really never came out, and the M8 sneaks behind the church once again. They're using no, the buildings, G. duck and cover. No, did George buy it? Oh, George, he went balls in trying to get that sniper. Just wound up a carcass and flame. All right, um, all right. I call it for Devm right here at 13 minutes. It was a glorious death, though. Like he's right in the middle of it all was. of the Axis forces right there. Uh, either really brave or totally stupid. Or both. Well, we've got a Puma coming out now from uh, Tier Three from Devm, and it looks like we've got WSC from the US, which I assume has got to be a sniper to try and get the counter snipe. Well, some rifles are chasing that striper now. And that sniper ducks behind the hedgerow and retreats. And it looks like he will escape. And those fully healthy folks will send the bars packing. But Devm looking very strong, capping away the center, repairing his half-track. Um, Stefan is still chilling. Stefan, Stefan in the half-track who is yet to be named. High five. The, the, the Minesweeper squad found some mines up in the north, but there are some Pyos there to defend it, but these Pyos are under strength. Mine is cleared. The Pyos have to backpedal away. They were going to OP that fuel. Yeah, that's can. really interesting. Especially for Siberians Puma's to see that they were going to OP the fuel. Because now Siberians thinking, why... He didn't chase him. Siberians got to be thinking, why was he going to OP the fuel? What's his plan here? And then he sees the Puma. So I'm thinking we're going to see Stug. some either heavily vetted Pumas or, yeah, vet Stugs is, uh, is the more likely option at this stage. The pilots went out to do the job again, but now there was an M8 that, that said, nah, -uh, no OPs for you. Popping off in the center, Siberian's trying to bring some rifles in. And uh, this this reminds me of the last game where just pushing rifles into this strong Wehrmacht position is a futile effort. But Siberian does have a mortar, so he might be able to go on the stuff. Position. Like what? what happened to the sniper? Where? What? The what first mortar hit straight on the sniper's head. Sniper down. Was that the sniper? I thought it just killed the MG, like one guy from the MG, but no. that was the sniper, huh? It killed okay, the sniper wow. first. That, that's, that's how you that's how you count a snipe. Just build a mortar. Man, mortar paying paying for itself straight away. But Siberian still at risk of being pinned. Uh, he can't really be pinned if he's got the mortar out, especially now the sniper's dead. That, I can't emphasize how big an issue that is. Because the issue of having mortars out is dangerous because if someone has a sniper they can take it out and if you try and retreat it you'll lose the uh, vehicle as well. But without the sniper on the field that is a, a huge deal. Well, that mortar is now going to do a lot of work. It looks really bad for Siberian, but he already has the tool to break out of this pin, and that is the mortar. And you just see, it just killed three Volksgrenadiers there. They're going to try to reinforce at the half-track, but the mortar is just what you need to get out of the pin. Uh-oh, he doesn't want to lose his M8, though. It's going to be really tough to duck around the hedgerow. Let's see if this pack gets in another shot. The mortar is now trying to work on the pack, and somehow the Greyhound... Man, have we seen some slippery units tonight, or what? Yeah, Stephon and the half-track gets away with uh, almost no life as well. And Siberian's creeping an AT gun out, so he's got the tools to break this. He's going to repair his Greyhound. He's going to keep mortaring the position. He's got the AT so the Pumas and the half-track can't get too close. He's got two rifle squads that are already out of the pin area, like behind the lines, but they are, as of yet, inactive. Let's see where Siberian will decide Firestorm. to use them. 
Where's the Firestorm? Just selected Where Firestorm, he's dropping it now on the mortar in the AT gun. Wow, how did he get Viz all the way in there? The bolts ran up into range of everything and he dropped it, but it's done no damage. That was a complete waste of munitions and, to be honest with you, a waste of CP as well. Well, he almost took out that emplacement. I don't know if he's planning to do any base rush anytime soon. We do have a stug out, by the way. It's in the south at the moment. I don't know what it thinks it's going to do against these rifles, but uh, so it does look like we're going to have stugs. Can Siberian break this pin? Ooh, there's a great mortar shot damaging the engine of the Puma. They defended the fatherland until death. What, ha what, 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 what happened? What happened? What happened? Oh, off-map shoot on the northern plus 16 ammo, annihilating that Gren squad. That was actually quite big. Debem slacked up a bit and did not retreat, did not maybe see the smoke, and lost that whole Grenadier squad. Yeah, I think Siberian's got all the tools he needs, really. He's in almost as perfect... Is there a new... Oh, there's a new sniper. I think that the Siberian's got all the tools he needs, though, to um, to deal with what Devem's doing at the moment. Pack, He's got the weapon support. If he clears the pack, his M8 will have... Whoa, the flamers die, the pack dies, but the M8 has now found a way in. In fact, there's two M8s. Whoa, don't lose the whole rifle squad. The AT gun's getting brave. He's gotten his way across the river, and he's going to hone in on this Puma now. Here comes the first shot. I wonder if it'll be armor-piercing. It does lots of damage. The pack's trying to be remanned. No more bulks there. Two M8s all up in, and I suspect that these M8s will kill the pack and the Puma if they get the chance. Stefan is going to need to be real slippery to get out of this one. One M8 almost dies. There goes down the half-track. Stefan is so brave. Look at this brave little swim. He's trying to flank that AT gun. He's spotting for the Stug. The Stug's now in there flanking as well. Oh, Stefan, don't die. You've done your duty. Now try to get out of there, my friend. This AT gun will not die. It lays in a shot on the Stug. Stug's backing away and looks like, whoa, Stefan is just ducking AT shell. And I think Stefan cleared the 57, but then finally dies and gives our one of our brothers Greyhound here, Dave and his pal. Dave and uh, the other one doesn't have a name yet, but Dave got a striped vet killing Stefan. And that's a sad day. I think we should have a moment of silence. Okay, moment of silence is over. That is, that is sad to see. I like the mines on the pack there. Yeah, he did a it's lot of work. Make a little trap. <laughs> like, honestly, for being the first unit out on the field. He got that 57 on yeah. his way out, right? See you in hell, he said. He said, we're both going. Alright, little time check in honor of, of Stefan the Dead Schwimmwagen. Uh, we're at 21, 02, 03, 04, 05. And it looks like Siberian's just going to leave that pack there, hoping that Devon will try to recruit it, and he'll have a nasty surprise waiting for him. It was a really good uh, assault there by uh, Siberian doing what he needed to. He needed to break out of his base, and he managed to do that. Uh, but you look at the map control at the moment, it's all in Devon's favor. You look at the VPs, I mean, man. Being a Wehrmacht with uh, that kind of VP spread, like the US is yeah, that's, that's suffering on VPs in the early game. You never see that. Yeah. Wehrmacht would be comfortable to have the situation reversed and they'd be perfectly comfortable. I th this mortar is going to have to do a lot of work um, to uh, sort of push back the forces of Devem here, and I think if Devem just gets his own mortar, or uses the sniper, or even a Nebelwerfer, if that mortar goes down, he's... I think the Axis can just hold him, uh, and hold him off two VPs, probably for the rest of the game. I'd be surprised if he is able to, to break in here. I just clicked on Dave, and then I clicked on Rave, that's his twin brother, and they both said hi, and then the other one said hi. They're both twins, and they both got one stripe, and really, you couldn't tell them apart. They look exactly the same. Fire oh, here comes somewhere. the firestorm. Oh, no, mortar. Vet mortar. Don't buy it. Vet mortar is such a great unit. Oh, he bought it. <laughs> Looks like the AT gun's going to sneak on out of there, though. Whoa, yeah, maybe. Two AT rounds going in on that one stug. 
it's a really unusual choice to go Terror and to go straight for the first or the as well. Um, yeah, against the that, Americans. I mean, that's that 300 that munitions he's spent, and, and he's hurt an MG in placement. Yeah, hurt an MG in placement and killed a mortar. So he must be that's feeling a, pretty confident if he's willing to sort of use his command points on, and, and munitions just on that. That's a popular move against Brits if you can firestorm the infantry when they retreat to HQ, but you don't often see firestorm first against Americans. DevM Sniper, very bold, picking away at those AT guns. Actually clears one right under the nose of Dave or Rave. Can't tell which one it is. And Rave is down to almost dead status. The Stug's back out. Yeah, you can see again the great use of um, all the things to obscure line of sight. He keeps dancing the Sniper back, back behind that hedge, dancing the Stug's behind the church. Siberian's looking in a lot of trouble here. Now he's got WSC. I wonder if he'll build a counter sniper. Right now he's getting the Howie up, and as we saw in the last game, Howies can turn the tide. We'll see if Siberian's Howie can do the same amount of work that DevM's did in game one. And I like that Siberian's still harassing. He's going to lower that VP on the right. Boom is over there to take care of it. The thing is about the howitzer in this game that DevM's already got access to the Firestorm, he's already used it, so I wouldn't be surprised if once he's aware of that howitzer, he rushes something in to get the Firestorm off and try and kill the, the howitzer outright. Well here it's firing for the first time at pretty much nothing. Was there some unit there? I don't know what he's shooting at. Uh, yeah, oh, he was he trying was to get the sniper. Trying to hit the Thanks, sniper. Bud. Yeah. He failed though. The sniper's right on the border of that um of that river. It must be the Semwa River. So he ducked all that artillery. I think the chap's in trouble here. We've got three stugs out on the field and we're starting to vet. Yeah, uh, once they hit vet two, those things are pretty much a one man army. It's like raining pamphlets there where the rifles are trying to get out. I keep thinking there's some kind of forced retreat, but like, maybe that just kiosk got destroyed. Uh, look, the rifles are going to steal that pack. Okay, change of plan. Thanks so much for the trap. He needs as much AT as he can so get how's your these stugs. How's your army composition looking at the moment, Amy? Well, I've got my, t I've got Dave and Rave still. I've got my on map how I've got three rifles and now three AT guns. I mean, two were mine and one was just stolen. So I've got the tools. Let's see. All oh, the snipers retreating through the center, <laughs> but these stugs chase the rifles away, and the sniper's gonna live. I think those rifles that almost got wiped out by his own how deeper. Deeper. Yeah, I know. They. He, he took more friendly fire than he did damage to the enemy there. He, he needed to be a bit deeper to go against that nebel, and if he if he locates the nebel, he'll also locate the pack. I want to see a sniper from uh, Siberian, even if just to spot. Yeah, that would be that would be very useful, especially just to spot for his for his howitzer. Uh, and his IT oh, here we go. If he had something that he Look could push Dave. up with a little bit. Dave's in the base. What's he trying to do? He's going to do an off-map shot on the Sturm Army. Now, that won't kill it, will it? I mean, this is a suicide run here. And that Stug is going to... Oh, there's two Stugs back there now. That's going to prevent this M8. I think it would have had to do a few shots. Whoa! Is it going to... It does get the Sturm Armory. Okay, I'm corrected. And this other Stug is running into all sorts of crisscrossed AT fire. And this Stug, oh, he's down low too. Might have been a really nice swing for Siberian. Ah, oh, these rifles had a great flank coming, but they walked right into a mine. Yeah, the off map will, I think, you need one hit from an M8 for there to be a chance of it to kill the Stug Um... It can't quite kill it just on its own, but one hit from an M8, two or three will definitely do it. 
So Dave managed to slip out of there. Dave and Rave are still alive, and they're having quite an influence on that left side of the map. We lost an AT gun there, the Nebel fire, though, and, and uh, we expected that to happen. One AT gun is still left. He's still plugging away. These thugs are taking tons of damage, but, you know, there is no unit in Siberian's possession that can deliver the kill shot. He needs, like, an M10 or something. He cannot kill these thugs. They just keep retreating away. He has recaptured one of the AT guns. The other one is still cleared. He could try to recapture that one as well. The sniper's keeping an eye on it. The two M10 are poking and jabbing every once in a while, providing some LOS, harassing that church position. Stugs get repaired, and they come right back into the fight. The two AT guns are really deep for Siberia now. I think we might have lost Razor. I'm going to have to solo this for a bit. So hopefully Razor will come back here. The, the sniper's up there spotting. One one fully healthy Stug is being very bold, but runs into those two ATs and quickly backs away. Dev M has unlocked V1. That could be exciting if he can get one in on the base there. That Howie shot does clear the pack. That was quite a fortunate shot. Not that, not that Siberian has any armor, so clearing the pack doesn't really help him all that much. He did just push all of his three units forward. He's going to get firestormed here. Oh, those two AT guns. Oh, one of them is instantly cleared. The second one is cleared. The third AT, all three AT guns have fallen now as that house lights up in flames. And that was a very effective firestorm. And there is no anti-tank left on the field. These stugs are going to try to clear the vehicles. This M8 wishes he could cap the center VP, but he ain't armor company. Some rifles are coming in, but what are they going to do against three double vet stugs? I mean, he I mean, they're could all use the M8s dead. for the, the, the health of these things. Yeah, I them. wonder. Well, you could rush the M8s in there and probably take might, them all out if you don't do surround them micro properly. But the Look VPs are getting sniper. really, really low now. I'm still here. Yeah, well... He's got to throw him forward now. He does reman. Yeah, I hear you. He does reman this 157, and of course it misses on its first shot. Second shot, main gun destroyed. Puma's coming in. He's gonna flank that AT gun. Look, he split. Ooh, nice sticky in there. Okay, one stug finally down. Oh, the Puma's immobilized, but I don't know if the AT is gonna be able to turn and kill it. The M8 could go kill it. The M8's hunting stugs. Wow, second stug goes down. Siberian's putting in quite an effort, but. What killed the M8? His own Howie. The howitzer just took out two Stugs in uh, uh, in one shot. All right. Well, Rave or Dave bought it, but his buddy Double Vets and I I could have sworn it was a friendly fire that killed that that M8. But we'd have to check the replay again. Um, Siberian does not need to cap that plus five. He needs to cap that VP immediately. DevM's army is real thinned out. This is Siberian's big chance. Yeah, the Dev VPs are looking brutally low, though. Ready. Yep, down to 65 and ticking. The M8 does see that sniper. Let's see if he's going to go try to chase him. His detection radius is terrible, though, so it would be very difficult for him to get the kill by himself. Where is George when you need him? Look at that sniper still plucking away on those capping rifles. Oh, Siberian has stopped the drain at 65. Let's see if he can keep his position. I guess maybe Dev M didn't take good care enough of his stugs. I, Siberian was very fortunate to finally kill all three of them. When the in the last fight there was a howitzer shot came in and two of them were high fighting oh, each big other mine. and it killed both of them. Huge M8 mine there yeah, annihilates Dev that big um, squad. Is uh, we're down, down to three squads here. Two grand squads and a sniper. That's all DevM has on the field. 
but Siberian does not know it, and could that perhaps be enough? These Grins are doing the duty. They've raised the center VP, and this one Shrek that Grin Squad is harassing Dave. He's double vet, though, and he's got friends to repair him. I mean, both armies are really thin right now. And look at this. Siberian is being chased away by two measly Grenadier, grenadier squads. Here comes his rifles, though, finally, onto the field. Where did these two healthy rifle squads come from? Are those just reinforced rifles that have been around forever? They look fresh. He's got no vet on them. He needs to stop that drain. He's down to 56. These rifles need to use some teamwork here. Look at this. He's just capping under tons of fire. It's not that desperate yet, Siberian. Come on, man. You got to strike a fire. Oh, oh, no. That's he terrible. loses the squad. That's really awful. And then the second squad is forced retreated. Oh, Siberian. Come on, man. It's not that desperate yet. It's not worth losing the squad. Sniper retreats. No, as you say, Siberian looks like he's in. getting desperate here. Dave's about to buy it too. DevM's actually sneakily remanned that pack out by the lake, and if that pack could get set up, no. <laughs> Once again, we see desperate engineers capping a grenadier nade against the capping NGs. <laughs> Man, that center VP has seen some action here. Finally, a fully healthy rifle squad to come and deal with those grenadiers. They don't need to cap under fire. They've got a crazy VP lead. They're just going to fight and retreat. The rifles find the pack. That's good. Clear some space for the M8 to work. Sniper's still plugging away. He's got 21. No, oh, let him right He's over the mine. The I'm at 54, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55. And DevM's tiny little army can all be selected with one selection. He does have some grenadiers in his base, but... That's pretty much everything he's got. But it might be enough. I think Siberian's it looks like it's going to be an enough. Map. Siberian's got 750 manpower. He's hoping that an off-map will come in here and save the day for him. This sniper by the way up to 23 kills now. So his Howie shots, he just doesn't know where to shoot. That's a complete miss because he was shooting blind. So he's not getting anything. He's reinforcing his engineers. He still doesn't have that, that magic number 800 yet. The M8's coming in. M8's got a nice flank coming up. There's an off map on the position. It's getting real desperate here. Down to 35 VPs. He just hit 800. Oh no, but Dave dies. The sniper retreats. Come on, call the off map. Pull the wheel. Let's see what you get. You don't have time to waste, my friend. Here comes the slot machine. It's one M10, a rifle squad, an MG, and an AT gun. Yeah, he was hoping for lots of rifles then, I think. If he got uh, two rifle squads and an M8, it would have been way better. The M10 doesn't really provide anything at the moment. Siberian's trying a cute tactic here. He leads the Grenadiers over. They're doing like a shift in the defense, like football here. Like the tight end just switched to wide receiver there and the, 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 the secondary is shifting over there to cover him. And so they do not want these rifles lowering that right VP. But this has cleared a little bit of space. And if Siberian can rush to the center and wipe that center VP, he's down to 21. It's getting real desperate here. Don't lose your rifles on the right. You can't afford to lose anything. They pop suppressing fire just to delay. And these, look at this M10 pushing these Grenadiers, and indeed, Siberian is going to stop the drain. <laughs> there goes some house down. That's the first we've seen in this battle. And look at that! All the um, Okay, almost all the squads force retreated. Good thing those engineers are there with 14 VPs left. Let's see if they can stop this drain. It is getting desperate. This M10 is working its butt off to push these Grenadiers around to stop them from killing his precious engineers. That MG might be huge. MG setting up in the church. Such a desperate VP struggle. It's down to 12. There's only two NGs left capping. One NG left capping. I don't think they're going to get it up. They don't. They fail. 
And the Grens are swarming in now. The Shrek Grens are back, and that's a nightmare for that M10. He's going to try to push as much as he can. He's even getting some squash killed. They're trying to cap. They just want to finish it. Devin wants out of this. The M10 is down. The flag is going up. And if that flag reaches the top of the pole, that might just be it. 11 VP. 10 VP. 9 VP. 30 cal being sniped. Oh! oh. Off map kills the sniper, oh. but 7 VP. Rifles are rushing 6. Oh! <laughs> Rifles are taking friendly fire. Okay, let's see if the engineers can to do it. 5. Four. It's New Year's Eve on Semwa. Three. All squads there. Let's see. Does he have a force retreat? They do. Why? They white it three BP. Oh, that nade though could be huge. Engineers are dead. Rifles are down to two guys. And you know what? AT guns can't cap victory points. <laughs> this 30 cal is shooting fish in a barrel, but you know what? It's not going to be enough. Wow. Bud, take us to the axes. We might be witnessing the upset of Season 3. If Siberian has ever been up against the wall, this is the moment. He is down 